friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is why is reproduction necessary? So anyways in the first slide I already gave you an idea that how would it be if there is no reproduction at all. Right? So let us see once again the reasons which justify the necessity of reproduction. The reproduction retains a particular species of living organisms. That's what I just discussed in the first slide, right? So if there is no reproduction, that, that particular species will become extinct. For example, if we take, if we consider, say, if we consider the lions, let us suppose if the lions stop reproducing, if there are no new lions being born, what will happen? After a couple of years, a day will come when all the lions who are existing now, they all will die and there will be no lions at all. Right? So, reproduction helps in maintaining a particular species. Transmission of characters from one generation to the next. So, reproduction also plays a role here. So, th that's what I was discussing some time back that we would have noticed that there are similarities seen in us which are quite similar to our parents. So what is happening? So the characters or the traits are getting transferred from one generation to the other. For example, we would have seen that we look very similar to our parents. Our parents, I mean maybe our father looks very similar to our grandparents. Similarly, our grandfather looks very similar to his parents. Parents means any of his parents, maybe the similarities with the father or the similarities with the mother or a mix of them. So here in this picture you can see here a couple and there are two kids. So if you look at the kids, this kid has got black hair which is very similar to his father. So he got this trait from his father whereas the other kid got brown hair which is similar to the mother. So he inherited it from the mother. So this transmission of characteristics from one generation to the next, this is known as inheritance. And this inheritance happens because of reproduction. If there is no reproduction, there will be no inheritance. Right? So that means there are some characters which are not only the species is retained, certain characters are also retained. For example, in this case, this guy had black hair. Right? Now, since he reproduced, that means since they, this couple gave birth to children, so this child also has black hair. Now, when this child grows up and he gets married and again he gives birth to his children, maybe one of his children will again have black hair. So, black hair is nothing but a trait or a character. So, this black hair is also getting transferred or transmitted from one generation to the other. So reproduction not only retains the species, so here it is retaining the human species as a whole. On top of that, it also helps to retain a particular character from one generation to the next generation. And this transmission of characters is known as inheritance. Variations lead to the origin of new species. So here is an interesting term here, variations. So here this second Point was talking about inheritance. Now you might be interested to know that how this inheritance happens. How is it that the black hair trait got transferred from the father to the son? So that is actually a very interesting topic to discuss. But however in this lesson we will focus our study only on the process of reproduction. How the how a new organism is born. How a new organism is actually Form. So we will focus on that. We will talk about this inheritance and also about variations in our next lesson. So, but for now, I need to tell you something. I need to explain you something about variations. What is variation? Variation, the word variation means difference, right? Something which is different. Now in this case, in this example of the couple, do you notice something that the two children, they inherited some, some characters from the father they inherited some characters from their mother, but there are some characters which are neither inherited from the father nor inherited from the mother. So it is a new character which the child has developed. For example, if you look at this child, he has got such big eyes, right? So do you think that he 
his dad had big eyes? No. Do you think the mom has big eyes? No. So big eyes is something which is different from both the parents. No. So that means it is a new character which has come out of this reproduction. So these kind of differences are known as variations. That means something which is different. Something which was not supposed to happen but something had happened. Some new thing which come out of reproduction that is known as variations. And these variations are extremely helpful in the long run. How? It's because gradually with such variations. Now as I said, so now big eyes is one variation. I mean none of them had but by chance this child got it. Now when this child grows up and he gets married, he gives birth to his children, maybe one of his children might have big eyes, right? Because that time he is the parent. So one of his children might have big eyes, correct? Now along with those big eyes, maybe they have some more character which is again different from their parents. Maybe they will have some other new thing. Maybe they can have um, thick lips, right? Now gradually with such new changes over a period of time, it might happen that it results in a new species altogether. So now when I take this example of human beings, you, it, it, it might become quite uh, unbelievable for you that how come such small variations can give rise to a new species altogether. So instead of taking this example, let us look at the example of dogs. So here on the screen, you can see a variety of dogs, right? All of them are dogs. But do you think that all of them look similar to each other? No. Right? So all of them have got different features, different characters and different traits. But they are all dogs. So now, it, it, this is nothing but a result of variations. Right? Because maybe it all started with one single dog. Maybe there was just one variety of dog sometime long, long back. Right? So maybe that dog reproduced. So two, two dogs mated and they reproduced. So when they reproduced, maybe there was some small variation like maybe they, one of their children had big ears. Right? Now when that dog again reproduced later, again maybe their, one of their children had some new character. They, that their children had big ears and along with big ears, they also had a spotted body color. Somewhat like this. So here you can see this dog had, has got big ears. This dog has got spotted color. So now when this process keeps continuing, because the process of reproduction keeps continuing, right? Now as the process continues, there are many new traits which come up. Like big, big ear or the spotted color or maybe the furry body, body covered with furs. So there are a variety of characteristics which come up during this process of reproduction. Now, when after hundreds and hundreds of years, after a long, long time, what happens is that those new variations gradually end up in a new organism altogether. So here you can see when you compare this dog with this one, they, even though both of them are dogs, but they are no way similar. They are completely different from each other. So we can say that because of the variations, because of the small, small variations in each generation, over a period of several years, sometimes it gives rise to a new species. So that is one advantage of variations. So here you, you understood what is variation. Variation is a new trait which comes in a children as a result of reproduction. So here the new trait is big eyes. So now when this reproduction con continues, there are many such new traits which keep coming on the way. Now when all these new traits get accumulated, so over a period of several years, sometimes you end up getting an organism which is totally different from the organism you started the entire thing with. For example, here also in this case, if this guy gets married, if any of his children has big eyes and he also gets his complexion totally black right so his appearance will change completely now if again that guy gets married and he again gives birth to his children so maybe one of his children gets big eyes 
and dark complexion and on top of that maybe he's bald having hair so just imagine how much the appearance is changing with time because there are possibilities that people can get kids like that because we don't know how exactly their features are going to be so in with passage of time the kind of organism which we are getting that is different because of this small small variations so this is another significance of reproduction so these are the three most important reasons because of which we say that reproduction is a very very important process for all living organisms first of all for the survival of the living organisms on earth secondly for transmission of characters so that the characters do not end up the characters keep on going from one generation to the next generation and the third is so that whenever reproduction happens there will be some variations and these variations in turn will give rise to new species in the long run clear okay now how inheritance happens and how variations happen we will discuss about these topics in our next lesson so here we will not focus on these topics instead our focus will be on how reproduction happens how the new organisms are formed Thank you. Please visit www.examtheo.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.